Hey guys, in this screencast I'm going to be demoing the Float Engine. Float Engine is an isometric games engine built entirely using HTML5, JavaScript and CSS. It is completely plugin-less and it works on all your devices including PC, Mac, Linux, iPhone, iPad, Android, as long as you have a browser. So let's begin. First of all I would like to show you the panning methods in a game built using Float Engine, like this one, this is a demo game, you can drag the grid around, like so, or you can use the compass, which is on the top right hand side corner. As you can see, the grid just floats around effortlessly. Or you can even use your keyboard keys. So if I click on the left hand cut, left key or the right key, top key, bottom key, it just works. As you can see, this grid, unlike other flash games, is quite large. In fact, this particular one is 50 by 50, which is 2,500 tiles. The grid size isn't really important, as the game is built using HTML5, so the actual resources used by the computer are really minimal. Right, let's begin by showing you some input methods that the Float Engine provides. First of all, it has a selectable input method. This means you're just basically drawing a square on the grid. So let's add some buildings. As you can see, you just select an area that you wish and just let go and it just works. Let's add some more buildings. Isn't that cool? Let's add some fields. It just works. Now, I'd like to show you the drawable input method. This is ideal for paths, such as roads, rails, etc. So let's add some dirt tracks to this world that we're building. As you can see, as you're drawing the path, the actual coverage area provided by these paths is immediately indicated. So you know that your building is influenced by the coverage area. There we are. Right. So now we can drag around. As you can see, we already have quite a few objects inside the viewport, but the actual panning around is not really affected at all. As you can see, it just works really, really smoothly. Again, we can use our keys, keyboard keys. It just works seamlessly. All right, let's add some more dirt tracks to complete the picture. Cool. Let's add some more paths, or some more fields rather. Right, as you can see, the path mechanism is quite intelligent. So if I was to add a path going away from the houses, like so, it would just know to add a T-junction. Or, if I was to add a path going this way, it just knows how to add a cross crossroads. There we are. Let's delete these. Another input method is droppable. For example, if I want to build a farm, the engine itself is intelligent enough to know where we can or cannot place the farm. So obviously you can't place the farm over the houses. However, as soon as it finds an empty area, it highlights it, like so. So we can, we can put it anywhere here. Actually, let's put it here in the corner. That would be the droppable method. Let's do a extended droppable. Extended droppable is exactly the same as droppable, except it shows a coverage area which the building provides. So if you were to add a communal area such as, let's say, a gas plant, as you can see here, again, it's intelligent enough to know where it can or cannot place the gas plant. And also, at the same time, 
it highlights the area that the gas plant will provide. So let's put the gas plant next to the houses. Like so. There we are. And of course, we just continue playing as we were. As you've already seen um, how the bulldozer fun function works, but also, for example, let's say we were to add some more houses around the gas plant, or let's say some fields, like so. Again, the selectable knows where it can or cannot add the fields. So let's add some here. Of course, as we bulldoze these, the bulldozer function is quite intelligent, so it knows how to delete objects which are bigger than one tile. So as I delete these, of course it highlights them. Of course, if I go halfway through to the gas plant, nothing happens. Only when I complete the whole picture does it get highlighted and ready for deletion. So let go and it's deleted. Both engine has a resizable viewport. That means if I'm to resize this browser window, like so, the game resizes accordingly. Okay, so I can just build some stuff and it makes no difference whatsoever to the game. It just works naturally. It also works extremely well on high resolution screens and also on dual monitor screens with even higher resolution. The other feature that Flow Tangent has is in-game music. So this can be just turned on in the settings, like so. And I can just enable in-game music. I can just turn it off. The other feature that Flow Tangent has is also the in-game sound effects. So I can also enable them by just ticking this box here. So now when I perform a, an action, like let's say bulldozing, the sound effect kicks in. Like so. And also it can also be turnly, easily turned off. Another really cool feature is the in-game advertising. This works like so. This is all controlled via the back office. So I can add this billboard here. And it just slides. This can be paid advertising, of course. The game continues playing just like normal. Another really cool feature is the in-game animation. If I turn this on inside the settings, you can see that these objects are intelligent enough to know how to follow the path. And not only that, they're intelligent enough to know how to slow down just, beco just before the path curvature. Now if I edit these paths dynamically, like so, you will see that the objects will adapt the new path. So if I extend them, can now see that 
the objects know where the new characters are and it's intelligent enough just to follow them. And finally, a really super cool feature of the Float Games engine is the in-world video playing. And this works like so. This is just a test video. Of course, Float Engine is built using HTML5, so this is not a problem. So let's put this video in. As you can see, this is full featured video playing right inside the world. We can just continue playing the game as we were. There we are. And of course, we can just delete this object like any other object. 